Hello everybody. Welcome to Dialogues for Change. Life is not a void to be filled. It's a plenitude to be discovered. So today I would like to share with you some very inspiring thoughts by Raymond Panikar, hmm, taken from this little collection of his essays in his book Invisible Harmony, Essays on Contemplation and Responsibility. In this book he has some very, very nice thoughts on understanding and what understanding is about. So I will share some of his thoughts with you from his article, The Pluralism of Truth, The Question of Understanding. In olden times, people understood that they didn't understand one another. People understood that they did not understand those exotic fellows, those strange costumes, and those foreign religions. But since they did not meet them every day, it was not a great challenge. The foreigners lived in beautiful countries, primitive jungles, or neglected ghettos, but always far away, geograph geographically or spiritually. Now and then, some anthropologists would tell us stories which we found more or less interesting, funny, or irritating. The skirmishes were only among neighboring religions, often tinged with economic and political problems, or among some intellectuals worried with the negative results of religious divergences. Now, the problems are before our own eyes, and we need to understand them. Please bear with, my, with me the only English philosophical pun that I allow myself. To understand is to stand under the spell of the thing which we understand. It is to be got by the spell of the thing, and stand under it in admiration, or perhaps skepticism. It is an existential attitude. We stand really under the power of the risky act of knowing. To know, as the Upanishads and Thomas Aquinas, following Aristotle, explicitly said, meant to identify ourselves with the thing known. Now, due to the shift of meaning of the notion of knowledge, introduced and popularized by the modern so-called natural sciences, to understand has been reduced to being able to foresee, calculate, and dominate. In a word, we claim to understand by overstanding. If we overstand, we simply apply our own categories or superstructures. We superimpose them in order to recognize the object and no longer to understand the thing. Should I interject here a footnote on the Kantian categories in Shankara's critique, Ante Literam, with this notion of adhyasa, superimposition? I'm only preparing the ground to indicate that there is an unavoidably epistemological problem undergirding our question. If we overstand, like a pretended universal scientific knowledge, we approach reality from a standpoint superior to that of the things themselves. We are not listening to the things, obeying them. We are integrating objects into our mental scheme. We overstand from a higher platform, reason, science, revelation, or whatever to which, of course, we have a privileged access. Intelligibility comes then from a single superior principle. On the other hand, if we truly understand, we shall humbly recognize that, while we have access to a source of intelligibility, other people may tap on other sources as well, or on other streams of the same source. Human history has shown us that man has many different self-understandings. Can we bypass the different human self-understandings by our exclusive interpretation? We may recognize objects, but here we have to deal not with an object, but with man, whose very nature is to be endowed with self-understanding, so that to know man includes to know man's self-understandings, and not just to know our own interpretations of an object called Anthropos. This is the problem. Something happened to a Sicilian at the beginning of the century. He was caught, taken to court, manacled. It seemed that he was innocent, but he didn't utter a word when the judge was asking him to defend himself. When the advocate later asked him why he didn't speak, he said, how could I speak if I, if I had my hands tied? For him the word was still something more than meaning, it was gesture. How could he speak without using the hands at the same time as the tongue? I hope these little thoughts and understanding provoked you a little, maybe made you think a little, to open up 
not only to understanding but first to start to listen to ourselves, others and what surrounds us. I hope this little inspiration on Monday, 19th December 2011 inspired you. Good dialogue for change inspirations to you.